And hello, everyone. Um, thank you all for your patience as we've been getting started. Welcome to the additional year kind of virtual meetup and info session. Um, yeah, thank you all for your interest in an in additional year and in um, addition, current additional year for joining us. Thanks for your willingness to share um, some experience and insights and wisdom and lived experience around an additional year. Um, and in getting started, it would be great if folks could um, introduce themselves and share um, names, pronouns, um, and where you're currently serving, and maybe briefly, just briefly, initially, kind of what um, made you say yes to this space, and, you know, if you're a current first-year JV, um, what you're maybe interested in about related to additional year, um, or maybe some questions, and for current additional year JVs, um, yeah, maybe sharing a little bit um, that kind of insight or wisdom or experience or um, things you'd like to um, share about during this time together. Um, and to maybe help facilitate that, I can see some names and then some phone numbers. Um, so maybe I'll try and use the names that, that are here and then um, use the, the first three digits, use the area code of the phone numbers, if that's all right, to uh, kind of prompt folks to to introduce themselves. Um, I wish we could do a virtual thumbs to ask if that's all right, but alas, I don't know if we have, if Zoom permits us to do that. Oh, okay, I see one thumb. Thanks, Hannah's iPhone. Um, appreciate that. Um, and yeah, maybe if folks also haven't had a chance yet, if you're not speaking, um, it could be helpful with some background noise if folks can mute themselves. Um, that could be helpful if that's possible. Um, and I can get us started. Um, again, my name is Greg. I use he, him pronouns, uh, program coordinator with JVC Northwest, um, working most closely with JVs in Spokane, Missoula, and Boise. And I was a JV 2013-14 um, at House of Charity in Spokane. Um, and yeah, I'm excited to be here um, and yeah, engage in some dialogue conversation around the possibilities related to an additional year. Um, and next I see a 412 number. Can I ask who that is? Yeah, hello. Uh, this is Michael DeSantis. Um, I am a JV currently serving in Portland, Mac, um, as a public policy associate with a group called Ecumenical Ministries of Oregon. And I'm an AY. I was in Ashton, Montana last year. And he, him pronouns. Awesome. Thanks, Michael. Thanks for joining us. Uh, and see a 580 phone number? Hi. Oh, 580. Are you there? I heard the hello and then it, it cut out, I think. I wonder if we might be having. We finished already. Oh, five eight zero. Are you still there? Yeah, I'm still there. Did you hear me? I think I had some technical difficulties. Sorry about that. Would you mind doing that briefly one more time? Yeah, yeah. So this is Cody Hervey. I am currently serving in Seattle. I am a first year JV, just interested in doing an additional year. Awesome. Thanks, Cody. And I see a 971 number. Are those folks joining us from Portland? No. Zena and Chris, is that you all? I don't think so. It shouldn't be. We should be at 503 if you see one. Because we're the office. I think I think outgoing calls, it, it shows up as a 971. I think, I think. Oh, that's oh that's okay. Like you, all. <laughs> you got us then. That's us. Okay, yeah, we can, we can go. 
Um, so, hi everybody, my name is Zaina Abusada. I am the full-time recruiter for JVC Northwest and a former JV my first year in 2017-2018 in Ashland, Montana, my second year in 2018 and 2019 in Anchorage, Alaska. And so yeah, I can kind of speak to both ends on um, someone contemplating a first, uh, second year and someone who did a second year. Um, yeah, and I use she, her pronouns, and yeah, I'm currently on recruitment team. Hi, everybody. My name is Chris Soriano. I use he, him pronouns. I am the recruitment coordinator at JVC Northwest. Uh, I was not a JV myself. Uh, I did serve two years uh, with AmeriCorps with Habitat for Humanity in Louisiana, um, and I'm just very excited uh, I'm grateful that all of you have called in and are expressing so much interest in the possibility of a, a second year of service. Yeah. So, um, excited for this conversation. Yeah. Awesome. Thanks, Zena and Chris. And I see a 215 phone number. Two one five, are you still there? Maybe some technical difficulties there. Maybe we can pass for now and, and, and come back to you to use our mutual invitation language. Uh four two five, are you still there? Hi Greg, yeah, that's uh this is Natalie here. Uh I am an AY currently serving in Yakima, Washington. I served my first year in Gresham, Oregon, and I'm happy to talk about both and I use she, her, hers pronouns. Thanks, Natalie. And I see an eight one zero number. That's me. Uh this is Joe Volpe. Um currently serving in Portland at Medical Ministries of Oregon and HIV Day Center. Um, currently considering an AY or other form of service here. Awesome. Thanks, Joe. And I see Grace Siebert. Hello, this is Grace. Um, I use she, her pronouns. I'm currently serving in Portland, Oregon at um, Raphael House of Oregon, which is a domestic violence shelter. Um, I'm currently sitting in kind of a loud coffee shop, so I'm sorry if there's a lot of background sound. Um, and I'm just interested in the possibility of a second year, and I'm curious to hear what other folks think about it. It's all good. Thanks, Grace. And yeah, thanks for y'all's patience with, with any technical difficulties. Um, and then I see Hannah Harvey. Hi. Um, yeah, uh, my name is Hannah. I am currently serving in Spokane, and I uh, use she, her, hers pronouns, and I'm really just kind of wanting to hear um, about the AY experience. Great. Thanks, Hannah. Um, and then I see Nick Front. Yeah, hello. Uh, my name is Nick Front, and I'm currently serving in Bend, Oregon, and yeah, uh, he, him, his pronouns. And yeah, I'm just here to uh, kind of hear uh, what the additional year people have to say about making that uh, decision. So, yeah. Great. Thanks, Nick. Um, all right. I think a couple more folks. Thanks for y'all's patience as we're introducing ourselves. Um, and then I see Hannah, Hannah's iPhone. Hi, everybody. Um, I think this is so fun. Thanks for being here. Um, my name is Hannah. My pronouns are she, her, hers. I'm currently serving in Missoula, Montana, and last year was in Aloha, Oregon. Thanks, Hannah. Um, and I then also see an 810 number. Have you had a chance to introduce yourself yet? Eight one zero is me. I went already. Unless there's another eight one zero. Oh, oops! Is that Joe? Yeah. Oh. Did you hear what I said? Yeah, yeah. Sorry about that. Thank you. I. No, you're good. Accept. 
Um, okay, and then I think uh, 215, are you still there? Can we try you again? Hi, sorry. This is Sam Henry. Um, I use she, her, her pronouns, and I'm currently in Portland, Oregon at Catholic Charities. Awesome. Thanks, Sam. And then I think if I'm doing my calculation correctly, I think that's everyone. Is there anyone who hasn't had a chance to introduce, say hello yet? Cool. Um, well, great. Uh, thank, again, thank you all for being here. Um, appreciate, again, yeah, the chance to talk with folks who are interested in additional year and folks who are currently doing, currently serving in an additional year. Um, and then, yeah, maybe I can kind of run through the list and if folks would maybe be willing to share a little bit more about for, for current first year JVs, kind of what you're maybe interested about or curious about. Um, and yeah, I would like to learn more about related to an additional year. Um, and then, yeah, for current additional year JVs, um, if there are particular things, you know, you'd, you'd like to share more about um, kind of insights, that kind of stuff. Um, and so, and yeah, maybe as we're going to, if, if it's helpful to pause and um, address a certain thing as it comes up, maybe we can, can do that as well. And yeah, thanks again for y'all's patience with as we're navigating this virtual kind of meetup. Um, but yeah, how about, uh, Sam, would you be willing to start with kind of interests or kind of questions related to an additional year? Sure. Um, yeah, so I'm considering doing an additional year, and I guess I was wondering about like what, just like in general that process is like, and I don't know, like how people who chose to do an AY, like made that decision, what were like some of the things they were like considering, um, things like that. And then I guess I was also wondering about like around location, like if you went somewhere like very different or stayed in a similar area and like how that like played a role in your decision making process. Yeah, absolutely. Those are, those are some great questions. Um, and yeah, happy to share a little bit more about um, process and some, uh, yeah, questions that can be helpful to consider in, in the discernment process. And I think you named a couple great ones there. And then, yeah, if there's maybe at least one or two current additional year JVs who would be willing to share maybe a little bit about that um, lived experience, that, that could be great as well. Um, but yeah, in, in terms of the, the process, there are some similarities and kind of some differences to the first year process. Um, there is a written application, abbreviated written application, so that's something that's a little bit different. Um, but yeah, some of that kind of general personal information, demographic kind of information, um, then a few um, kind of shorter, or short briefish, and then a, also kind of a short essay question. Um, and then we also ask for four references, so um, two current community mate references, um, a site supervisor reference, and uh, a program coordinator reference. Um, and yeah, I mean, if you haven't already, you know, speaking of the application, it could be great to check in with your site supervisor and check in with your program coordinator um, about that as well. And yeah, talking about the reference. Um, and then, yeah, there's an interview with JVC Northwest, um, kind of talking about the values again, but in, in light of um, having, you know, six, seven months under your belt of a JV year and then also looking ahead to the possibility of an additional year. Um, and yeah, there's a service interest form again, and then there's kind of like a matching process, interview process again. Um, so that's the process in kind of a nutshell, maybe before getting to some of those other discernment pieces. Chris or Zena, is there anything you all would add to that in terms of the process? Can you hear us? Yep, yep. Um, in terms of adding to the process of, of an additional year, um, yeah, I think that just the standard process that, that covered it in terms of, especially with your um, just giving advice for references, it's just the same as, as your first year, get those references in early, um, because even though like you live with those folks or they're your site supervisor or they're your program coordinator, you still want to give them plenty of time. Um, usually the application 
uh, the priority application for AYs will close it's either a couple days before the first year um, application, so early February. So you want to really start looking at that. Um, it should be the 18th this year. The 18th this year. Okay, yeah. So just a bit after the the, the first year application, um, and so yeah, getting started on on discerning about that. Just just working through that process. It is an abbreviated application, but it still um, takes a bit of time, especially like from from personal experience when I was doing it during my first JV year. Um, definitely just uh, going through the process of what Greg said. That's uh, I think all I have to add. Do you, do you have anything else? about it no not really i think i think you both summed it up uh really well and just kind of reiterating again uh make sure you get your references yeah um in on time that's, that's a, sometimes can be a hold up yep cool thank you all um and yeah sam that was a great question as well in terms of kind of uh questions for discernment right related to staying in um the same locale versus maybe um, considering discerning a, a, a new locale or a different locale and also maybe similar question or parallel question related to areas of service. Um, some folks stay maybe in their same position, some folks maybe stay um, in their same area of service but maybe in a different position in the same locale or different kind of locale. Um, so yeah, good questions there. Um, and quick note there related to potentially staying in the same position. Um, if folks are interested in the possibility of staying um, in the same position, serving an additional year in the same position, um, also sooner rather than later, it would be great to reach out to Sarah Jones, the JV program manager. Um, again, that's Sarah Jones, the JV program manager, um, to check in about that um, and kind of factors with that. So reach out to Sarah Jones um, if that is of interest too. Um, but then yeah, Zena, would you be willing to share a little bit in terms of kind of what your discernment was like as well in the same locale versus um, exploring, trying out, applying to a different locale? Yeah. Um, I think that my discernment process when I was in Ashland um, about doing a second year was me sitting about mid-year wanting to know, like, have more time with our four values. Um, I had been in such a rural place, and I'm sure that, like, Mike can comment to that on as well, also serving in Ashland, um, that some of the values are different from, like, when you serve in, like, a more urban place, and so just getting to experience both of those was intriguing for me, so I knew that I wanted to go maybe to a different place, um, a more urban area, and experience the values in in both settings um, to see like what simple living meant in really remote locale and also an urban locale. Um, I also got a really cool opportunity to check out Alaska in terms of service placements, and that was something as an AY I wanted to I wanted to see. Um, being able to serve in both Montana and Alaska was, was a pretty cool experience. Um, and so I think that it was really difficult for me to, to make the decision to leave Ashland, but like it just went through, a, I went through a lot of discernment process in terms of what I wanted in a new service placement and the, the nonprofit I was placed in in Anchorage had a lot to do with that. Uh, so yeah, it's it's definitely a lot of thinking. It was a lot of going back and forth, asking advice from housemates, and just really thinking about what your service experience has been and what you want it to be. Um, like continuing on, um, I think is a good thing to consider. And so yeah, of course, all of your discernment processes are going to be different. All of you are going to want different things or um, cherish different things from your service experience. But I'd say. Uh, kind of sit in that idea of, of spending more time with our four values, and um, that's a, like a good starting place for, for anybody's discernment process, I think. Yeah, absolutely. Um, some great points there. Thanks, Dana. And uh, maybe Hannah Kosal, is there anything you would add to that? Um, 
and yeah, maybe also curious to ask, um, right, I haven't been myself serve in an additional year, but sometimes heard from some additional years that uh, it was maybe helpful to go to a new locale to have kind of a, uh, a fresh experience in ways or maybe kind of uh, resist the, the, what's the word, maybe temptation of kind of comparing one year to another that can sometimes be, um, yeah, less than helpful. Um, but yeah, I don't know, Hannah, Hannah, anything to add to that with your additional year experience so far? Yeah, uh, thanks everybody for sharing. Um, so yeah, I was in Aloha, Oregon last year and I'm now in Missoula, Montana. Um, and doing an additional year, I definitely knew that I wanted to go to a new locale, um, a new position. Um, and I was actually fortunate enough to be able to visit Missoula last spring. Um, the JV's there hosted me and that was really great. Just check in a little more. Um, I think it's really nice to have more opportunities uh, and more knowledge about positions and locales than I definitely did have just applying like right out of college before Oregon. Um, so I would say definitely take advantage of that and try to get in touch with current JVs who are in positions that you might be looking forward to or in locales to hear more about that. Um, I know that was really helpful for me. Um, and I'm in a new retreat region now. I'm in a brand new state. Um, I think there's definitely like probably more efforts I could have done in learning a little bit more about local issues or regional issues. I think I had learned a lot where I was last year in Aloha and maybe could have been a little more prep now, but I'm trying to quickly learn and adapt that so I can my serving can be as beneficial as it can be in that manner. Um, but I think it has really helped. Um, it is a much different experience. And I think last year I spent a lot of time learning about what was really healthy for me in a locale or in a position, whether that's office culture or like number of staff that you work with or uh, the different types of support you can get. I really love being outdoors and that was more of a challenge for me in Aloha than it is right now for me in Missoula. So just for like means of self-care has been really great. Um, and so I think there's some things in the position in a JV year that are always a gamble and I think that's totally the beauty of it. Um, but there are some things that can be pretty concrete to like figure out um, what can be really good for you and can nurture you in a new year. Um, so I spent a lot of time really trying to figure out what that was going to be, what were some of the things that I knew I did have some control over and um, choice in making. Um, so just making sure that that was going to be able to best fit me as best as possible. Yeah, I think that's what I have to add. Absolutely, yeah. Thank you, Hannah, for sharing about that. And yeah, those are some great points that might... Um, add on to a little bit as well in terms of talking with JVs currently in a locale. Um, yeah, just a reminder, um, you have everyone's contact information from the start of the year at orientation in those orientation folders. So yeah, make use of that. Um, and yeah, it's a great point as well to kind of do some homework on, on locale you're kind of considering and um, in connecting with the JVs and also, you know, kind of own uh, kind of learning and research and homework as well. That can be certainly be worthwhile and beneficial. Um, yeah, Natalie or, or Michael, anything to add to that in terms of, uh, yeah, your discernment process and um, staying in locale versus, you know, going to a new locale um, or, yeah, other, other factors in the discernment process? Um, I, think, I think those um, points are really great. I think a lot of what Dana was talking about, I uh, really resonated with me and my experience in deciding to leave Ashland. I think for me, um, as I got close, like further down the line of, of recognizing that I really wanted more time with the four values, um, for me it was really a question of I either really wanted to to go further into the community and the like the group like the community I was serving with, um, which was the students at Saint Labray in Ashland, um, or I wanted to totally challenge myself and do something that was very new as far as service went, um, and uh, ultimately I just decided that. Um, it's for the same reason that I kind of joined JBC Northwest in the very beginning was to continue growing. I um, wanted to really challenge myself to go a little bit more outside my comfort zone and, and get into the, the advocacy world and um, really kind of leave the world of working with younger people and students for at least a year. Um, and that was a really hard decision and it's definitely one that um, at times has proven hard but I've also ended up learning a whole whole lot about um, advocacy and a whole whole different side of uh, social justice work which has been really 
interesting and I think uh, one of the things I'm most grateful for out of this second year. Thanks, Michael. Yeah, that's such a good point in terms of um, right comfort versus safe zone versus kind of stretch learning kind of zone versus um, you know kind of unsafe kind of zone. And we're right. What could an additional year be like in terms of that kind of stretch learning zone and um, right opportunities to um, learn more about other kind of justice issues and in, in areas? Um, yeah, absolutely. Uh, yeah, Natalie. Anything also you would add in terms of your kind of discernment experience or additional year experience so far? Uh, yeah. So I would say that um, going into this year, um, I uh, liked that um, the position that I had um, last year. I got to work with a um, population that meant a lot to me, and I've gotten a chance to kind of go deeper this year um, and in a different um, capacity even though I uh, really did love what I was doing last year and um, uh, in talking with my site supervisor last year, um, she had said that um, they really like having new people so other people can get that experience. And I kind of was like, well, if I, I want a new experience too, but I want to um, keep serving um, serving this population. And I think that this position this year has really um, given me uh, a chance to um, do that. Um, and uh, that's been a really great opportunity for growth for me. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Thank you, Natalie. Um, well, great, yeah, maybe continuing with, with uh, questions from current first year JVs. Um, yeah, Joe, could I ask if there are any questions you have or kind of follow-up questions to stuff we've talked about so far? Anything to add? Um, I guess from looking for the perspective of people who have done it a second time around, deciding how to choose like a new um, area of interest, if that makes sense or how to choose a new area of interest when you, when something doesn't speak to, um, like when something doesn't speak too strongly to you. Cl clarifying question there, like, are you, are you asking, um, or are, are you, would it, it sounds like, are you maybe still trying to find what that kind of justice issue you're passionate about is? And so maybe trying to, figure out that what that might be during kind of the application process. Is that kind of what you're asking? Yes, that was a good summary. <laughs> okay, thanks. thanks. Um, yeah, is there, um, or even, you know, first year JVs as well, if there are, you know, insights you have into that as well. I think that's probably a fruitful kind of question potentially for, for everyone. But yeah, maybe in particular, additionally, your JVs as well, kind of, yeah, how, um, do folks kind of, you know, identify, or yeah, is it, is it possible to identify, you know, a justice issue that folks are passionate about recognizing too, that there is, you know, so much overlap between, in con connection between, interconnection between um, justice issues. Um, yeah, I don't know, maybe uh, Hannah Kosa, would, would you have any insights, initial thoughts into that or anything to share around that? Yeah, um, this is kind of a cool question for today. Um, so last year, I worked at Home Plate Youth Services um, in the western suburbs of Portland. And so it was a drop-in resource center for youth who are unhoused, um, often working like ages 12 to 24. Um, I did street outreach there. I really loved it. Um, and in college, I was really interested in housing and what that looked like. And um, so I was really excited to have a year of experience, hands-on, learning more about it, and did very quickly. Um, and then going into this year, I am now serving at the YWCA here in Missoula, Montana, um, and I work with a youth leadership girls empowerment group. It's kind of like a badass and more inclusive Girl Scouts program. <laughs> um, we work through lunch groups and after school groups in middle schools and elementary schools in town, and we also have skilled trades workshops for girls, non-binary youth, trans women groups um, on the weekends or periodically monthly, and that's more high school aged. Um, and I have really enjoyed the switch to 
um, or at least doing something as an additional year that, um, well, I, I, I guess, I don't know, I go change the feelings about it, but it is interesting going from something that's more like direct crisis work um, into something that's now more, a little more upstream um, in terms of like programming and what that looks like. The YWCA as a whole does a lot with domestic violence, and so this is can be often seen as an early intervention program. Um, so it's really interesting working more on the like, event planning and programming side and education versus um, providing resources directly. Um, but I think there are a lot of similarities, and it's really nice getting to still be able to work with youth. Um, so I think that's a cool thing. I can take a lot of the stuff I learned last year and um, just get to continue to build relationships in a new way that I do now. Um, and I see people probably more consistently, but like not as frequently as I did last year. So yeah, there's different varies, but different some things that are still similar as well. Um, so if there's something that you're doing now, like to find some ways that maybe that position can still be continued in a new one, if that's what you're interested in. But the whole, my general theme has changed from housing to more education and empowerment. And I, I don't know, I guess empowerments and all of it, but that's been, yeah, just a cool switch to learn something new and to see all these things are obviously always intersected. Um, today I was actually at a ton of meetings for the point in time count for any of you who work in housing. Um, I'm like helping host a youth uh, event. It's not something that was really my position, but I've gotten a part of the Youth Homelessness Task Force here in Missoula because um, I realized that was more of a passion of mine that I have been missing. Um, and so it's been really neat to figure out how I can engage in that here. Um, and how that can be of service to the youth that I work with, even if I don't directly work in housing anymore. Um, there's always places that are always going to want volunteers and folks who have some experience and knowledge to add into that. Um, so I'm pretty thankful to have been able to get connected in a lot of ways there. Um, yeah, so it's not something that I was like, I know I want to go into education, but I knew here are some general themes of things I'm interested in. I enjoy working with youth. Here's another chance to figure out what it can look like in a different capacity so I can figure out more long term um what i'd be more interested in doing hope that helps absolutely yeah yeah thank you hannah for um insights there and, and sharing some about that and, and your experience and um yeah some of the things you're interested in and, and passions and right how um there can be so many you know transferable things within the work or service folks are doing in terms of um, yeah, skill development or kind of justice issues kind of being addressed, and right, the uh, interconnections between those for, for sure. Um, but yeah, I want to be mindful of time, um, and yeah, I want to, so much wisdom in the room, I hesitate to uh, put a damper on anything, but yeah, I do want to be mindful of time, and maybe you would ask if there's one more um, additional year kind of insight around that question of, yeah, identifying um, justice issues that kind of one is, is passionate about or maybe kind of discerning around um, yeah before maybe move into another question um, and yeah recognizing both the limitations of time and our um, technological vehicle for having this conversation right now um, but yeah is there one more person who might be willing to sh talk on that speak to that I'd be happy to um so uh, like I had kind of alluded to earlier, um, I am really, really passionate about serving the Latinx population and uh, I was, did so in um, a very different setting, uh, specifically um, in a clinical setting last year. And uh, it was a more tangible impact of, you know, once you get someone health insurance, like that you see the more immediate impact. But uh, this year, um, going to two housing sites that Catholic Charities run, it's been, um, there's been a greater focus on relationship building, I've found. And I feel like uh, that's been impactful it, to me in different ways because I've seen other, um, other things that um, the residents are um, needing assistance with beyond health insurance and kind of uh, seeing how everything is kind of tied together. Um, like what obviously they've got housing figured out through us through catholic charities but like academics and seeing how um you know the parents can't always help their kids with homework and how can I, how can i maybe be that person to help and uh i'm sorry i'm walking home from the bus and i'm a little out of breath um but so i would say um yeah seeing um seeing how uh 
I get to establish relationships um, that are maybe a little more permanent since I didn't always see the same patients all the time for health insurance. And then as I've had formed those deeper relationships, how how I've been able to learn of the things that they're struggling with and where can I can I best serve them and help them uh, to navigate things. And again, I'm sorry I'm out of breath. That's all right. That's all right. Yeah, thank you, Natalie, for you know sharing about that and kind of yeah issues you're you're passionate about and yeah things can continue to you know learn about and and explore. Um, yeah, maybe before moving on to another question, maybe just want to pause for a minute and clarify. Um, Joe and Sam, does that does those kind of answer your questions so far, or, or were there any other lingering questions? Um, yeah, related to justice issues and related to um, kind of locale discernment. Um, thank you, everyone, for sharing. I think that was helpful insight. Same. <laughs> great, great. Okay, just checking, checking in. Thanks, y'all. Um, well, cool. Well, then, um, yeah, maybe, and we have about another 15, give or take 15 minutes or so until about 6 o'clock. And, um, yeah, just recognizing as well that, you know, likely only be able to cover so much here. And so, yeah, if there are lingering questions after this afternoon, um, yeah, please certainly, you know, follow up with me, follow up with your program coordinator. Um, yeah, follow up with um, with folks. Hopefully this, you know, isn't uh, the only conversation, but maybe, um, you know, a continuing conversation or start of the conversation. Um, but yeah, uh, would be curious to maybe um, ask or tap. Grace, are there any um, other questions that are bubbling up for you or things that would be helpful to talk some more about? Yeah, I'm wondering um, if the people currently doing AYs could talk about like what they feel like they're getting out of this AY that um, they like weren't able to get last year or like that kind of just is specific to doing a second year, engaging for a second year. Um, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, great, great question. Kind of what are some things that can maybe continue to be learned or, you know, additional fruits of an additional year that maybe didn't happen during a first year? Am I hearing that correctly? Or would that be fair to yeah. summarize back? Yeah, okay. that sounds right. Cool. Yeah, that's great. Thanks. Yeah, thank you. Um, well, yeah, Michael, would, would you be willing to share some about that or any initial thoughts on that? Yeah, uh, happy to share. Um, I think for me, uh, a lot of what I, so uh, the big piece, I think that one of the biggest pieces is, is the one that I talked about already with um, service, like really um, wanting we'll to move into different lines of service. But I think beyond the service piece, thinking about the four values, um, I really wanted to find some, I, I think last year, my year in a lot of ways was really defined by um, work in a lot of ways with um, simple living, um, which in some ways is just, um, the nature of life in, in a really rural locale is that there wasn't a, is that there just weren't a whole lot of options for um, like essentially buying things. And so I, I came up with a bunch of projects to keep myself busy there and do a bunch of like self-sufficiency stuff. But I really wanted to um, go more deeply into some other pieces. So um, I think like community kind of more broadly speaking um, in my rural locale, it was, um, really a really great way to get involved in one specific community and um it but it it wasn't there weren't a whole lot of community organizations beyond um like basically the school that we were serving at and i really wanted to be able to get more involved there um i really wanted to be able to um explore what um it meant to do things like simple living in a place where you had more options for buying stuff and you didn't have, and when our community wasn't um, kind of dependent on one monthly run to like a Costco kind of place. Um, and um, I, I think, uh, yeah, I think even just engaging with the communities that I'm, I was serving with um, in a more, I think in a more diverse, locale if that makes sense like just given that um with regards to more the um 
types of service that my housemates were doing was something that was really appealing to me. And so um, last year, most of my housemates, we were attached, we were all attached to indigenous communities and most of us were attached to, to like student populations in some way. Um, and so that was mostly what we ended up talking about, which is a great way to really dive deeply into that. But this year I have housemates who are involved um, with food justice programs, with housing, um, with addiction, um, treatment and so um, just getting to really explore a very broad perspective of things and, and hearing um, and processing in a very different way um, like our the kind of conversations we have about service look very different than the ones where um, my health last year where we were all kind of in a similar way um, so yeah I think for me it was really about exploring the values that I think last year felt like I hadn't quite given as much work to um, and uh, finding a locale that would really allow that to happen. Thanks, Michael. Yeah, thanks for sharing a little bit more about that and right, touching on some of those locale kind of differences as well, what, you know, simple living maybe can look like in a urban locale versus a rural locale and, right, you know, monetary simplicity, simplicity in terms of um, material goods and time and relationships and um, yeah how that can can look differently and how yeah an additional year um, can be an opportunity to co continue to live into the values and um, in in that way um, well yeah so thank you um, and yeah Zena could I ask anything you would add to that in terms of um, things you uh, yeah were hoping to get out of an additional year or maybe got out of an additional year that uh, didn't quite um, yeah, come up or, or get from your, your first year? Yeah, um, I'd be happy to, for sure. I want to reiterate a lot of what Michael just said because it was incredibly similar experience for me being in also Ashland my first year and then being up in Anchorage my second year. Um, yeah, you, but I really particularly want to touch on what he said and expand on what he said about community uh, because I think having finished both of my years, that was something that changed the most and in different ways and like mm -hmm. expanded the most in different ways. So I had my Ashland community, I had my students, the, the community I was living with, and then in Anchorage, I had uh, a community of a household full of different people. So you're 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 not. You know, I know a lot of folks are afraid of like, oh, like losing your current community, but that's like not the case. You gain your new community, you don't lose your old community, you have both, um, just in different ways. And then you build on that new community and you, and I, yeah, I really just saw like myself, I think feel a little bit more emboldened to continue growing community in Anchorage and so that was that was a cool thing in terms of like oh I've, I've done the second year I want to grow in this in this communal aspect of what this program is so I'm going to do that with my household I'm going to do that with like the community of service I was in uh, especially I was serving refugee and immigrant folks so like at a whole neighborhood um, of folks in in Anchorage and so that was really cool to kind of be able to immerse myself <laughs> something that I wanted to do and also just like the community of Anchorage like the city of Anchorage at large and seeing like how this very urban place in the state of Alaska was also incredibly like isolated and remote as well just because of where it is and that made it such a unique community and so yeah I think that that my experience is doing doing a full two years now and looking back on both of them i think that that is the value that changed like that changed and grew the most for me because i felt like my confidence in my second year explore and just it kind of just grew organically and that was the most important thing i think for me that i got out of out of both of them it's like the the service was was enriching both years and just like the, the simple living was different in, in different ways via location, but I think, yeah, the aspect of community, I would say, is if you want to kind of 
delve more into that and, and grow that more organically, a second year ended up being very, very wonderful for that. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Thanks for touching on that, Zaina. Um, and yeah, Chris, would be curious to ask you as well, anything to add to that in terms of, right, having served, you know, multiple years with um, also a couple different programs, um, anything you would add in terms of what you got maybe out of um, one experience that you maybe didn't get out of the other experience, or also, right, serving, would be curious to ask you too, serving in um, uh, different locales and things, what was that experience like for you? Yeah, so it's um, it's interesting, and I'm curious uh, to any of the, uh, the the first year JVs who might be interested in continuing on to a second year, uh, you know, in the same community uh, that they're in. That was kind of where I went when I served uh, my second year of AmeriCorps. I was trying to decide. I had a lot of um, applied to other positions in other locations, and ultimately. Uh, decided to do a second term of service with the same organization in the same location and I felt uh, really when I made that decision it was about you know three quarters of the way through my service and I was honestly really hitting my stride and I thought that it was important for me to have uh, a, essentially another crack at I have a full year uh, under my belt and kind of you know, I understand the, the service that I'm doing. I understand the organization. I get the day to day. I've had this kind of long uh, journey of, of training to an extent, and now I'm really ready to hit the ground running in my second year. And I found that to be a very um, rewarding and, and, and satisfying um, uh, uh, aspect of, of serving a second year in the same location. So. That that was one that went into my process, and I thought I'd be interested in hearing if anybody is is kind of considering the same the same idea. Thanks, Chris. Yeah, that's a great question. Are there any um, right? It sounds like I heard from several folks in um, factors considerations for exploring a new locale. Are there any um, folks who are interested in the possibility of staying right in the same locale in the same area of service too? Cool, and that's okay if not uh, a great a great question, you know, either way. And yeah, something to certainly be be thinking about. Um, well, cool. Um, maybe have time for a few more brief questions. Um, I would be curious to ask Hannah Harvey. Yeah, are there um, any questions you have at this point that we haven't yet had a chance to to touch on? Hey, sorry, I'm eating popcorn. Um, I, I don't know. I, I guess I would be interested to hear how people, um, I think it's like Zaina briefly touched on this, how to not compare um, your experiences in different communities. Um, I get locales because it's to be pretty different um, geographically and with the issues that they face, but how to not like compare your experience you had in one community um, versus like your new community, but just valuing, valuing them both like loving them both i guess if that makes sense yeah yeah absolutely that's that's a great question um yeah i don't know who let's see who would be willing to share about that first um yeah hannah coastal is there anything you would uh say to that question of the possibility of comparing communities uh, sure. Uh, Hannah, popcorn is my favorite snack. Good choice. Um, so <laughs> you can't not compare communities. <laughs> and I think that's okay. Um, just in the same way that like, I feel like it's, you can't go into something without expectations. I think you should just be really aware of what they are um, and how you can like work around them if they don't come up to what they end up being. Um, and um, gosh, I am so freaking grateful for both my communities. Um, I feel really lucky. Um, and I think 
also in that, like I've had challenges in both. Um, and one thing I do, I talk to my old community a lot. Um, I called like two of them this weekend. Um, so that's always really lovely. And um, yeah, I was even like feeling a little homesick for just Oregon this weekend. And um, I think it's great. And I think that's awesome. And I think it was such a valid year. And I think my current community mates feel that about wherever they're coming from this past year. Um, and I don't think it's, yeah, you need to like hide that or ignore those feelings um, and just like sit with that and be grateful for it. Um, I, yeah, don't know if there's a great secret, but I think I, they're both very different in different ways. And I'm just like really grateful for the chance to have such a variety um, and to like keep learning things from new people. Um, I think focusing on the energy that living with first year AY or first year JVs brings um, was really important. Um, and yeah, just something that's been really helpful for me in transitioning. Um, yeah, I also remember at the, like we, AYs went a day early to orientation. They told us it takes a year to process a year. Um, so also I would say like, don't sell yourself up to believe that you can like process your whole year and like the one week before you start it all over again, um, or however much time you get, whatever month or time length your position is. Um, yeah, and I think that's okay. And it's just trying to find ways to balance that and ways to stay connected, but also ways to intentionally invest in your current community is also really important. Um, yes. <laughs> cool. Thank you. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah, thank you. Hannah and Hannah for the question and for uh, insights into that. And yeah, um, that's such a good point about kind of mindfulness and awareness of of expectations and yeah, gratitude for um, experiences in communities. And I'm a big quotes person. Um, it reminds me of um, one of my favorite Anne Lamott's quote, Anne Lamott quotes, who said, yeah, expectations can be resentment under construction. And so, um, yeah, being aware of and mindful of kind of those expectations. Um, for community and for service and for whatever it might be, um, yeah, can, can certainly be helpful. And right, you know, they're they're inevitable as well. And there isn't, um, I think, a, a magic kind of answer to that. that. That's a great point, Hannah, um, to that. That certainly resonates. Um, well, yeah, thank you. Thank you for that. Um, and yeah, maybe real briefly, yeah, sorry, we're, we're running up to the time mark. Um, but yeah, Cody, is there anything, I'm curious to ask you as well, is there anything um, else following up for you that we haven't yet had a, a chance to touch on yet? Oh, well, I mean, mine really had to do uh, specifically with community, but it kind of was touched on. But I was curious about um, if you have someone in your locale that's considering doing an AY, and you are as well, um, just like what kind of what kind of balance uh, does that like take in order to make sure you're not um, I guess because here in Seattle, because I'm considering doing a Y here in Seattle, like with the placements that I'm interested in, and so are they. Uh, just any advice for like how to be building the new connections within a new community while you have like other community mates that are still in the area? Because I'll we'll have other community mates from this year that are heavily considering, you know, staying here in Seattle in the area. I think one thing that's helpful that um, I did during my first year and we're looking into um, putting into practice again during my second year here is the idea of uh, one-on-ones. It's kind of like a, a friend date, for lack of a better description, where you um, deliberately spend some time one-on-one -on -one with each of your community mates, and that really helps um, kind of get you to get to know one another. and. Um, what kinds of stuff that uh, you might have in common or what you um, might not have in common. And it's okay um, not um, have everything in common, but at least it's uh, being deliberate about time together and um, really getting to know one another. And I think that's a practice that's helpful, you know, both during your first year as you're um, getting to know your community mates, but also during your second year to um, really be, um, be uh, diving in and immersing with your new community. I hope that helps. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, I, I, it's helpful because that's, that's something that my current community does, you know, with diets and such. And uh, just, I just guess like it's a good thing to be 
kind of considering, you know, pondering all the questions of that, what that would look like so that don't go forward and uh, neglect a new community by having expectations. So uh, thank you all for talking about the community aspect. And yeah, any other additional years, if it's community mates or even FJVs who maybe you know who are um, in the locale that you're currently serving in, how to um, balance relationships and balance community time and kind of uh, maybe set boundaries if, if necessary or if appropriate or if fitting um, kind of what that's that's been like, even if it's not maybe a, a specific community mate you lived in with your, your first year? Honestly, I think it's about um, just like you would in any like n navigating new or old friendships is like creating that boundary uh, for other people um, and just making sure that you're giving everyone that you meet and all your new community mates just like the due diligence and, and respect that they deserve and forming and like the chance to form that organic bond that you've chosen like to grow as well with the people that you already know. Um, I know that in both Montana and in Alaska particularly, there's a lot of folks that stay in the communities uh, for for longer, uh, for FJVs as well as AYs in, in the Alaska community. So like we're all like kind of a tight-knit bunch, but there was definitely some folks that knew people more than other people. Um, and you could like see the strength of that relationship, but then like you also saw them giving uh, respect to, to the new folks and um, having that organic balance. So I think it's all about that. It's just thinking about like if you've made new friends and like if you made new friends like throughout your whole life, like how would you treat your new friends versus your old friends? And hopefully you would try to treat them the same even though you're Relationships are at different points. Um, that's that's my two cents about it. That's what I have to say about it. Um, this is Hannah again. I just want to add one more thing. I think that was a great point, Zaina. Um, I think too, remembering that everyone that in your community now, wherever you're, they will be somewhere else next year, or maybe in the same place, but having different experiences too than the community that you're in. Um, and so just remembering, you're not alone, just because if you're still in JVC, um, yeah, everyone is going to be doing something different, or if they're doing something similar, it looks different. Um, and so, yeah, I, I just maybe so that isn't as scary. I think you might be the only one and the only one who is going to be comparing experiences or years or um, reflections in that way that everyone will have that differently and um, something that you can all share in together. Um, and also as an AY specific, I, it's been really nice to have some extra reflection on how special and rare this program and just experience is. Um, and I definitely hear that a lot from other folks who are no longer in it, but miss it. And I think it's neat to see that before I get to that point too, um, to kind of, yeah, just be a little more extra grateful for, um, what I have when I have it. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. Thank you all for sharing about that. And yeah, thanks. If folks can hang in there for one more minute. Um, yeah. Maybe you don't want to forget uh, about Nick. Nick, is there anything you were hoping? Um, yeah. And, and hopes that at least everyone can get at least one question in. Nick, is there anything yeah. you were hoping we would have a chance to talk about that we haven't yet had a chance to talk about? Yeah. Yeah. So for me, uh, I've enjoyed my position, but it's not been exactly what I'm looking for. I think that just kind of comes through the experiences. And I believe it was Hannah that I was talking about earlier that like throughout your first year, you're able to kind of narrow down on what you're looking for in your next steps. But like for me, it was kind of more of a general question. Uh, like are there specific differences applying for the second year? Uh, differences between applying for the second year uh, versus the first year that kind of help you go through like narrowing down those those options and kind of honing in on what you really want to get out of your second year that's the first part and then the second part would be for those people that ended up changing positions and kind of go to the AY year uh, did you get what you were kind of looking uh, for in those differences in the position like how well uh, did the process go in finding that position that gave you kind of those experiences you were looking for? Uh, 
and I can I can clarify that question more if needed because that kind of all over the place. No, no, good good questions. I think I heard in that kind of first part, right? There's so many options on the website. Kind of what did folks find helpful um, in terms of narrowing that down, especially in light of um, kind of a, a first year experience and looking towards an additional experience. Um, and yeah, in terms of looking ahead to an additional year, yeah, has it, you know, been what you were looking for, been when you expected, not what you expected? Would that be kind of a fair reflection back, summary back of those questions? Yeah, yeah, it would be. Thank you. Cool, cool. Yeah, great, great questions. Um, yeah, I would be curious to ask, yeah, Michael, anything you, any insights or thoughts, initial thoughts on either of those questions? Yeah, that's a great question. I feel like, um, I feel, I really, uh, appreciate what Hannah had said earlier about uh, recognizing expectations and sort of uh, checking them. I think that in some ways, um, I think my service placement has been, this year has been, um, I've gotten a lot of what I was expecting out of it. So I've gotten a lot of uh, learning how to do advocacy stuff and um, learning how the public policy world kind of works and how coalitions come together and um, how, or like nonprofits and um, organizations like EMO, uh, my service placement do advocacy work on, on the state level or local level. Um, I think that, um, one thing that um, I had maybe not done as much reflection on that I mm -hmm. think uh, in hindsight is like um, what the day-to-day -day experience of service would be like. So I think one thing that last year that um, was really energizing for me, and I think one of the reasons that I was so, um, in a lot of ways, uh, fond of my position and, and, and happy with my, my time at service is that um, it was very people-based and I got a lot of time working with students and um, that's something that's really energizing for me and, and this year a lot of my work is uh, very much like project-based and um, not so much like out in the community um, and though I have gotten those like the advocacy skills I think that um, just the the day-to-day -day, like what like the atmosphere of my, my service placement is like is um, not entirely what I was maybe expecting because I, I hadn't quite recognized how much of a change that would be. Um, and then, yeah, I think, I think some of the other stuff, I think um, for me, it's been good to kind of ease myself into some of the other expectations. So um, I think, um, like for example, like one thing that I was really excited about the opportunity to do in Portland um, was like bike commuting. Um, and that's something that I've, I've had to ease myself into throughout the year, just um, knowing that it, uh, it wasn't something I'd done before and was not something that was happening in Ashland. And so um, having those expectations and still like wanting to like grow into certain habits and certain uh, behaviors and ways of living out the values, but not necessarily expecting to be able to do them all at once. Um, and uh, yeah, I, I hope that, answers the question somewhat. <laughs> yeah, yeah, thank you. Thank you, Michael, for talking more about that. And um, expectations is a good point to kind of recall that again and, and some mindfulness awareness around that. Um, and yeah, some awareness there and kind of growth there in terms of um, kind of what energizes you, it, it sounds like, and um, kind of learning, kind of information um, with this year. Um, well, yeah, thanks for talking about that. Um, and yeah, Natalie, any, could I ask you um, anything you would add to that in terms of what it was like kind of narrowing down options and, um, right, have you been getting, you know, what you were expecting out of additional year or kind of, yeah, what's, what's that been like for you? For sure. So um, this was uh, one that um, I had this position that I'm serving in right now, um, which is resident services coordinator through Catholic Charities of Central Washington, frankly, wasn't even on my radar. Um, and it was one that um, the program team had thought would be a really good match for me. And 
after talking with um, someone who had served in this um, position previously to kind of get a sense of what the day to day would be like. I, I figured, you know, I would kind of dive in and give it a shot because uh, I've always um, just been one for um, trying something new. And uh, I definitely feel like it's it's been very interesting and different because when I go to the housing sites, it's um, it's a little different because you, you're at people's homes and um, I feel like that kind of um, forces you to, um, like I said, focus more on relationship building than looking at things from the perspective of a service provider, which um, sometimes with, you know, trying to count the numbers of um, how many kids came to after school activities, it's easy to fall into that trap, but you realize that um, because uh, because it's home for people that uh, um, the housing complexes, I should say that um, at the end of the day, that's the more important thing, and that um, really uh, kind of helped me to um, um, just focus my energy on um, the relationship building, um, and I think that's kind of helped the other things fall into place. Um, I hope that um, makes sense. Yeah, yeah. Thank you, Natalie. And yeah, thanks for the shout out to the program team as well. Again, yeah, we're happy to, you know, talk through options and, and talk through possibilities. Um, and yeah, talk about, you know, kind of service this year and, you know, how it might relate to or be different from, you know, service next year or, you know, communal life or living into simple living and living into spirituality reflection, um, of course, as well. Um, well, cool. Well, yeah, recognize. Uh, thanks for, again, thanks for y'all's patience. We are a little over time. Um, yeah, if folks need to go, um, certainly feel free to go. Happy to linger for maybe another couple minutes if there are any other um, burning questions that folks have that we haven't yet had a chance to talk about. Um, but again, hopefully this is, um, you know, the, the continuation of a conversation or the start of a conversation, um, and yeah, not the only conversation um, that, that folks are having. So yeah, please, let's continue to be in dialogue, be in communication. Um, but yeah, thank you all for um, your time and, and your energy this this afternoon, this evening. Um, yeah, lots of great questions and lots of lots of fruitful insights um, as well. And um, so yeah, thank you all. Christina, any other final closing remarks? Um, or yeah, and then any any burning questions that folks have? Yeah, just thanks for thanks for uh, joining us and. Uh, if you have any other questions, uh, also feel free to reach out to Chris and I um, and anyone on our recruitment team. Um, any questions, like I'm like either in the office or like I'm on the road, so just like you can email me, call me um, if you have any questions. Um, we're always happy to happy to help on that front. Yeah. Yep, definitely. Just make sure um, that your applications are in by February 18th, Yep. Uh, including all the references and so in addition to the questions um, that you've been asking tonight, if you have any sort of just technical basic questions about the application process itself, uh, that's another thing you uh, don't hesitate to reach out. We're, we are here for whatever you need. Real quick question on the application. Uh, so once we like submit it or anything like that, how, what's the time frame of like when we would have our interview or talk? Is it like after February 18th or kind of like when they come in? Uh, yeah, so, so everything will be, will take place after the 18th. So um, that's kind of the, the deadline for AY applications. We accept them up until the 18th and then um, starting on the 18th and beyond is when the, the whole, um, the whole selection and, and interview process begins for all AYs. Yeah. All right, cool. It'll Thank pretty, you. Uh, yeah, it'll be pretty similar to your like first year in terms of like you'll wait a couple weeks and then like you'll just start seeing like interview calls pop up like first week of March, things like that. And one thing I would maybe add to that as well, for the most part, applications are reviewed in the order they're received. And so if you can submit your application earlier, um, it can be to your benefit. We can most likely um, get to it sooner and review it sooner. So um, yeah, as, as folks mentioned earlier as well, the um, earlier you can be in touch with references, all the better. The earlier you can submit stuff, um, all the better um, in that regard. 
Um, but yeah, again, yeah, the priority due date February 18th, and then kind of rolling after that. Um, yeah. Oh, well, great. Thanks, y'all. Good question, Nick. Yeah, any other burning questions for folks? Well, I, I do have one. This is Cody. So quick question. If we are interested in finding out more information about a specific uh, placement, um, is it our best bet to talk to our specific PC and then kind of go through the grapevine to find out more about uh, who might be serving there and what the day-to-day -day life might be? Yeah, that's definitely um, a good way to go about it. Um, and yeah, being in touch with your, your PC again, yeah, can certainly be helpful. Um, and just a reminder too, um, you do have in that orientation folder a list of, you know, all the JVs and, and where they're serving and stuff. Um, so yeah, certainly be helpful to be in, in touch with the, you know, your PC, um, but if it's also helpful to um, cut out the middle person, so to speak, um, yeah, that, that's also available as well. Um, both could be good options there. Gotcha, thank you. All right. Well, yeah. Anything else on that, or other final burning questions? Nope, not for me. So I'm gonna get going. Thank you again. Okay. Thanks, Cody. All yep. right. Yeah. Thanks, y'all. Um, and again, yeah. Be in touch if other questions come up. Um, hopefully, yeah. Know where to find us. Phone, email please reach out. Um, but yeah, I'm going to shut this down. Um, thanks again, y'all. Thanks, everybody. Bye. Bye. Bye, Zara. Bye. See you soon, Greg. <laughs> See you, Hannah.